righty, GM, GM, and we are at uh, our demo day to celebrate the um, the building of the people in this room and some people who aren't in the room who have sent us some stuff to share because they are occupied at this point. Actually, one of the people uh, started a full-time job in Web3 this week and so isn't with us because he is building and that's super exciting. Uh, so we'll show his video uh of his project um and you know look just to to quickly reflect on this cohort it was uh it was great you know one of the things that we say is ship or ship and um you know when you have a cohort that's around the holidays it makes it more challenging and you know we we, we talk about that but we always say go back to ship or ship shippers find a way to get it done and um you know the people on this call that have shipped and are or are, are close to getting a better product out the door uh y'all are on your way now this is the beginning of being a shipper um and you need to know that this is just the beginning and you know it, if this was great for you and this was meaningful for you then it was all worth it if you still want more um there are more steps ahead and you got to know this um if you're going to keep driving forward towards this objective of making it in this space it does get harder not the actual writing the code side of it but dealing with a lot of externalities that are out of your control so you know just be aware of that we are always here for y'all um we have a really great relationship with you know with so many of our people that have graduated a lot of them have come back and worked with us uh, you know, the people that are working with us now, the people that we have working on, on dev shop builds, these are people that have been with us as long as a year. Um, you don't become a senior developer in two months, but we do get you zero to one pretty fast. Um, and you know, it's incumbent upon you to continue to work on your craft and that's every day. It, it's not a once in a while thing. And it, it it's going to require a lot of people looking at you like you're crazy, um, but we are crazy, and that's why we're in this space because we're allowed to be, and we can be comfortable in our own skin in Web three being a little crazy. So, um, you know, with that said, um, you know, we started a few months ago, and you know, I, you know, it was actually in November we started, and it's February first. This is a long stretch because of the holidays. Um, we started with an enrollment app with TypeScript, pinging that thing. Um, and then we ripped, we learned some things about, um, we learned some things about how to do the course better. You know, one of the things we're going to do this next course is we're going to let people who are really good at TypeScript opt out of that first week. So we could homogenize the group of people don't know enough TypeScript to really jam on just that really, really hard. Uh, we're going to get more token extensions in. You know, the course is never the same twice because things are changing so fast around us and the people in the room are different. So with that said, you know, graduates of the WBA are welcome to come and attend any of the live classes that you need. If you need to brush up, if you need, you know, y'all saw Johnny in there, all cohort. Johnny graduated two cohorts before this. So two cohorts after Johnny shows up every day because he's grinding to that, to that goal that he has for himself and he's working really hard and he's becoming a, a, an excellent, excellent builder. So, you know, I, I tell you all this because where we are now is, you know, we're shippers, you know, and that's a big, huge first step where, you know, we, when we demo these projects today, we didn't ship increment encounters and crossword puzzles. We ship some real stuff. So, uh, Nate, do you want to add any reflections on there? Yeah, I think that. You know, you guys have come a long way. Um, this is a great start to getting ready to pitch this to incubators and VCs and hackathons. So kick it off, guys. Have fun. Um, this is going to be great feedback for all of you and a, and a great experience. 
come a long way. And just to be here presenting this in a short period of time, know that you're in the top because not everyone can do this. So congrats. Let's go. Yeah, we, we yeah, started we, we start people in this group. Okay. Of 130 people that applied. We started with 51. So you, you all are, you know, at the top of that. Um, so have fun today. That's one thing we always do is we always have fun. Um, so, you know, we are able to do this and offer this to you all for free to learn uh, because of the Solana Foundation. So I, I want to, you know, flip it over to Chase real quickly here and let Chase say hi and, um, you know, just share a quick thought or two on that. But, you know, we, we are totally grateful uh, beyond belief for the opportunity to not only do this, but to continue to do this time after time uh, and, you know, serve you all and serve the ecosystem. What do you got, Chase? Hey, guys. Good to see everybody. Congratulations. Super stoked uh, to be here at Demo Day today. Um, don't really have a lot to say. Really just here to listen and, like, let you guys take center stage. But, um, but again, making it to the end of these cohorts is, is is not for the faint of heart so um anybody who's still on this call and, and demoing today has has made it further than than most people have so congratulations and uh looking forward to it awesome thanks chase and i mean look that was my last thought before we call end coin up first and that is uh resilience is the most important quality in this space not being able to write rust you know not being able to manage a wallet resilience and today we share the fruits of of that and we celebrate each other so with that said let's get andrew and his partner lucas to share endcoin go ahead oh i've got questions already who's put up their hand everyone see that okay yep amazing so yeah thank you guys uh for putting on this cohort has been like a super amazing learning experience um as part of it we've created uh, endcoin it's essentially a token system focused on the pulse on climate uh i'm andrew i'm on the left eating ice cream my friend lucas is on the right eating ice cream as well hello uh, so here but just yeah <laughs> Yeah, we've been repping on this um, for a while in uh, pubs in and out of London uh, and online as well in the past few months. Um, so yeah, it's just been really great working together, trying to trying to come up with a an interesting way of using modern technology to focus in on climate uh, climate change and how we can potentially help. Uh, the world is dying and there is no more valuable resource than the planet we call home. We must stabilize our emissions or prepare for a life in the bubble dome where grid has won. Encoin is made up of five sort of high level components. We have a rectifier, which is ingesting data from distributed sensors around the world, monitoring temperature of the oceans. We have a filter, which utilizes multiple decentralized data oracles to get the data on chain. We have an inverter, which is our token program emitting Gaia coin and Ncoin and using that temperature data as an inverse emission rate multiplier. We have a matcher, which during the emission phase will send a share of Ncoin and Gaia coin to green bond holders, climate activists, and all around good people. And we have a controller, which a portion of the emitted Ncoins and Gaia coins are added to. Uh, and this is controlled with a hybrid AMM to allow for liquidity and stability between Gaia coin and Ncoin. As part of my capstone, um, we touched a lot of these components, um, all except the matcher. Um, so we've managed to ship something that has essentially an end-to-end -end example of, of what we're trying to build. Uh, we spend the most time on the inverter, so essentially the token program for emitting uh, both tokens with that uh, inverted uh, emission script. But we also have an online data point we have, uh, we have a filter coming in, and then we've made a rudimentary AMM to control that too. Uh, looking into the future, 
we want to build out the rectifier and filter sections uh, using multiple sensor input data sources from entities that are not all friends. So right now we're using some NASA data, but we don't want to solely rely on that one entity. And that will allow for redundancy and stability of all of our data. And we also want to build an Oracle functionality to emit tokens on a schedule. So on chain, instead of relying on off chain infrastructure to run that, that daily job. Uh, we also want to look at the matcher and controller um, set up for this. So we want to emit a percentage of the tokens directly to people who are known good. We need a verifiable list of known good people or accounts without bias and without a centralized organization to name them. We'll mint the remaining tokens to a trusted AMM liquidity pool, wherein coin and Gaia coin can be traded. Thank you guys so much. Awesome. So you know, well so you know this really well done. Yeah, the um the interesting story about how Andrew came to work with us is that we met Lucas at Breakpoint and sat around that table where we camped out for the week a couple times. And he said, I got to get my partner with you guys. He doesn't think he's a good builder, a good coder, but he's better than he thinks he is. I remember Andrew was like, Oh, maybe I should do next cohort. Da, 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 da. And I'm like, Well, give it a try. And you know. You know that's kind of the thing you know we 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 support each other we connect with each other and you know here we are uh and coin is on its way yeah um thank you well so done. much jeff and yeah definitely want to say andrew you, you killed it you know so. yeah really well done any any thoughts for the guys any comments we're lucas you want to chime in a little bit more or, and if not, we can move on to the next one. Go ahead. Um, yeah, I'll give just a little overview. You know, I think that there, you know, this project started from kind of like a cynical view of, of how how can we short the end of the world? Like the economy isn't taking in the true price of carbon. That means there's a big value opportunity. You know, can we turn a data point into economy and capture that value? But as we've kind of iterated and grown and and figured out you know, what Solana can provide. I think there's actually, you know, a really interesting opportunity here you know, as a conceptual art piece, but but also as a way to to give back and join in the Solana refi opportunity. So yeah, I just wanted to say thanks again for, you know, giving us support to, to sort of start to mature and, and build out the thing. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. So we're gonna, we're gonna shift gears, but we're still gonna keep a, a similar service orientation with the theme, and we're gonna get Grayson up here. Uh, he and his partner built something very cool. That again, you know, we know Grayson fr from. He was in our first Cosm Wasm cohort almost two years ago, and he reached out and said, "How is it over there on Solana?" Or like, <laughs> "It's great." And uh, so, you know, knowing the quality of human that he is and just how much we enjoyed working with him, you know, two years ago, uh, he, he came up with an idea in a class one day that everybody still refers to as the, well, the Tudor maneuver. Um, <laughs> yeah, I still remember that. This, that's two years ago. But anyway, they, he had an idea. He's like, I don't think it's that, that great. And we're like, we love this. Um, and you know, the instructors gave him a lot of support. So Grayson, go ahead, man. Well, Jeff, I just want to say, I am still a little upset at you that you didn't force me to join the Solana cohort when Solana was $9, but it's okay. I forgive you. <laughs> I did. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, <clears throat> so hi everyone. My name is Grayson. I worked on this project with my partner, Ritvidge. Um, he was not able to join today but uh, I will be presenting uh, regardless. So um, as right now, we're just calling this 100 days of crypto code and we'll jump right in. So according to the Evans Data Corporation, there are approximately about 27 million full-time developers around the world. And we all know that software is eating the world and it has transformed the world. However, according to Electric Capital's 2023 developer report, there were just a little under 7,000 full-time Web3 developers. I know there's more part-time and um, just hobbyist Web3 developers, but you know, looking at just the full-time, we see the huge contrast between uh, you know, just regular 
software developers, and then those who are working full time in Web3. And if we truly believe that Web3 is the future, then we must get more developers into the world of Web3 because with more Web3 devs experimenting and building dApps, we have a higher chance of creating killer apps, which can then onboard the next billion crypto users. So where are the Web3 devs? All right, so solution. Uh, we are building a protocol that gamifies the learning experience for aspiring Web3, Web3 developers by combining the popular 100 Days of Code Challenge with financial incentives uniquely enabled by Web3 to boost motivation and accountability. So this is how it works. First, a user deposits one soul into a Solana program um, to join the 100 Days of Crypto Code Challenge. Then secondly, participants must push new code to his designated public GitHub repository at least once a day for the next 100 days. Third, if a user successfully pushes code for 100 consecutive days, then they earn back their full deposit of one soul. However, for each day that they miss, sorry about that, for each day that they miss, um, they will lose 1% of their deposit. So for example, if over the 100 day period, the participant misses 10 days or didn't push new code for 10 of those days out of the 100, then they will only get, after the 100 days, they will only get 0.9 soul returned back to them. So what are the benefits of this uh, platform or protocol? Um, it'll provide greater motivation for users to actually complete the challenge and learn Web3 development. Um, I saw a uh, tweet from Paul Graham co-founder of Y Combinator back in December, where uh, he shared a graph of uh, people who uh, tried out Replit's version of 100 Days of Code. Replit is like an online IDE. And um, it, it was like over 220,000 people uh, started the 100 Days of Code challenge. And then um, it was maybe 1,000 uh, or less people who actually completed the entire program. And so the completion rate is very, very abysmal. And so the benefit of using Web3 <clears throat> to um, have people deposit money that they've, that their own money or their own you know, crypto tokens to earn it back, it adds an element of a carrot and a stick. So the carrot or the reward is you can earn back what you deposit. And then the stick or the consequence is you can lose a part of your deposit if you don't take action. So ultimately, this should be a free thing if you put in the work. But if you don't, then obviously you have some consequences. Business model. So there are two ways for the protocol to earn money. Like we said, the protocol keeps 1% of the user's deposit if they don't push new code um, every day for the next uh, 100 days. So that 1% can add up. And then the second way that this protocol can earn money is um, in the future, we want to stake the user's deposit. So that one soul with Jito or you know, some other uh, protocol. And then over the next 100 day, over the 100 day challenge period, this deposit can earn staking and MEV rewards, which would then go to the protocol. So this is how the protocol can earn a little bit of money. So, Right now, the current version is very minimalistic. It's just a proof of concept. And so it only handles user deposits and stores funds in a vault. However, on the roadmap, we want to incorporate staking with Jito. We want to build out the reward distribution, um, integration with GitHub's API for automated code tracking, and then potentially even create Web3 ed educational content, like tutorials, assignments, quizzes. That way, it'll be an all-in-one platform. So in conclusion, Hard Rock Nick famously asked the question, can devs do something? So I will apply this question to our conundrum, right? Can devs do something about the lack of Web3 developers? And I believe we can. Um, we can onboard more devs into Web3 by using a platform or protocol like 100 Days of Crypto Code. All right, and that's well it for me. Well done. Well done. Um, congratulations. We, we timed this up, you know, for your, for your family life to end right now for you. <laughs> <laughs> congratulations on all of the above. Any thoughts or comments for uh, Grayson? And I just want to say for everyone watching it, 
he does su such a good job presenting and making it seem simple, but building something like this is not at all simple. Um, so congrats on getting that going. And it's great that it's got a revenue model that you can A, use partly to reward users at some point too um, in the future, but it's great that you continue on the all on-chain online um, component. There's been some companies that have raised really big money um, on the on on chain um, education component. So well done. Yeah. Gloria. Hungry Finn, great job. I really like um, your questions and I really resonate with the issue that you have mentioned with developers. I wanted to ask regarding the deposit will users have like the option to deposit more if they really want to keep themselves accountable or is one cell like the like the only amount yeah no that's a great question gloria so the question was um can you deposit more than one soul uh, i think this just for the proof of concept we wanted to just keep it simple of one soul but i can imagine you can totally open that up to whatever the user would want to deposit say for example they really really want to make sure they learn something they could deposit a hundred soul a thousand soul you know and um where the consequences are really big and so maybe they would commit more to actually completing the um you know the challenge so yeah I, i'm open to you know making that whatever the user would want Nice. Great answer. All right. Next up, we have Soul Tree. Are we ready, Soul Tree? Oh, uh, yep. Okay. Let me share my screen. Go for it. Mm, okay. You can see my screen. Not yet. Uh, there it is. Okay. Uh, so, uh, hello everyone. I want I I want to uh, introduce with uh, everyone uh, the tools. This it is a soul tree. The tool that allows users to visualize and interact with the micro tree. And uh, what is the pain point? The micro tree and the collection can be difficult to manage, uh, especially for like data sets, and it can be difficult to track with not in the tree correspond to which data item and it identify and fish error in the tree so this is a pain point uh, which uh, when when i uh, work with uh, with compress nft and when i create many micro tree i cannot manage the uh, micro tree i create yeah and i have a idea that is a stone tree is a tool that allows the user to visualize and interact with the micro tree and this can be useful to for for understand how micro tree work and such micro tree implement implementation and manage micro tree data so uh this is my solution yeah uh, i create the stone tree to provide a visual presentation of the micro tree and making is is easy to understand and manage uh, so user can query and user can edit the tree and uh, the tool will how to make uh, update the micro rules and it's on it's uh, can uh, uh, manage the collection uh, or manage the complete NFT of user, and uh, this can help user to identify and fix the error in the tree. Uh, in some case, you user uh, want to uh, update the um, compact NFT or update the uh, collection. So yeah, and to verify the the the, the, the um, data of the micro tree. So. Uh, this is uh, my feature. I want to create the um, tool to um, query and edit the micro tree data uh, and uh, manage on the collection and manage on the um, compact NFT. Uh, so this is my the demo demo of the tool. Mm, let's see. Uh, 
stole my demo. Yeah, this is a minus micro tree. You can create a micro tree data, and you can see the micro tree. But currently, I have some issue with the ship. It cannot translate the data because the net have some issue. Yes, the DevNet challenge at the right time of year. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so, um, yeah, this is a managed collection. You can create a collection, and uh, on the collection will be uh, saved on the database, and uh, manage can, um, uh, you, and user can manage on the collection of, of uh, yeah. Very cool. Awesome. Yeah, you can create a collection, and on the collection will show this is the menu and you can see on the collection in the zip translator. Yeah, this is a tool to uh, mean the compact uh, uh This is a, the simple project, but uh, you can use a tool to uh, create the compact MP for uh, for campaign. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you, you can select merge the micro tree. Yeah. Very, very cool. Yeah. The, by, by the way, you can uh, see the compact empty you create, and you can transfer the compact empty, or you can burn compact empty you create. Yeah. Oh, is it my uh, demo? Great. Yeah. Very, very cool. Um, do you, what are your plans for this next? Do you do you have any plans for this next? Uh, yeah, Be because um, currently I have uh, some issue with the uh, 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 visualize uh, com com uh, visualize the uh, tree. I want to create uh, create the, the the tree to manage on the node. You can. Uh, just uh, the notes is, is you. Uh, yeah, you can uh, manage on the node in the micro tree. And also, you can uh, update the node, update the node of the compressed empty. So, I want to uh, um, on, I want to develop the feature. Yeah, yeah. Great job. Any really, really cool, cool uh, solution orientation. Um, well done, um, you know, well done presenting as well. Uh, you know, really hard work. I know you put into this to make it, to make it happen. Um, any questions or comments from anybody? That was a good, a good presentation. Congratulations to you. Yeah. Well done. Um, yeah, very cool. So let's uh, let's keep moving here. Um, next, we have Alex with Pensry. All right, can you guys hear me? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So let me share my screen. Can you guys see my screen? Hello? Yeah, we can, we can see it. All right. So um, um, my project for the capstone is um, Pensry. So Pensry is actually an application designed to um, a normal standard Google form. So facilitating collection for user reviews. So anyone can use Pensry to get reviews let's say they have giveaways, let's say they just want to do a gated review also. So um, Pensry is the right application to you. So one of the problems is, is in responding to forms. So Pensry was built in a way that you don't have to impute um, details, instead you just slide to answer common questions. So lack of precise communication between creators and users and also transparency. Transparency in the sense that um, we made use of um, compressed NFTs in the sense that when you create your form, 
it automatically becomes a compressed NFTs. And the responses to those forms are NFTs minted to them. And then the solution was tokenized um, form filling with CNFTs, pass information and save user stress by making use of sliders instead of the traditional form filling style. And then we also created a reward system for users who feel form to create engagement. So hereby, you can actually create reward system in the sense that everybody that fills the form, since you can get the um, their um, you can get their NFTs and the wallet they minted with, so you can actually get the wallet addresses and send them tokens. So the traction was um, web three accessibility, seamless sharing, personalized form filling, and incentivized form filling. That is the aspect where you give them tokens or rewards. So um, this is my business model, but this is not yet going to be up for now because I'm still working on the project. And then I actually built it to learn. So let me go straight to the application um, and demo it. So this is the application. I don't know if you guys can see my screen. Not right now. Okay, let me share it here. So this is the application. So I made use of Web3 Auth for authentication. So here, um, Google Form is actually being used by people in Web2. So now I needed to make it in a way that anybody can also have that feeling that this is actually a normal form filling application. So with, with Web3 Auth, you also have um, the opportunity to create wallets and also sign in the application as it with your Google, with your Google form or your email addresses. So here I sign in with Google. Um, so it's authenticating. Let me um, let me run the authentication from my system. So. I'm signing in. Sorry about that. So, why um, I granted this authentication from my end? I'm waiting for it to. All right. So um, the network is kind of shaky, but very soon to down. And, yeah. So it's back. So it has authenticated. So this is my test feedback. But you can basically come here and create feedback. So I'll call it Capstone Project Feedback. So what is your review for the apps during projects? So I can basically um, choose the question I want here. How was 2023 caps Um I can add questions if I want. So, so basically, um, do you love WBA, right? So, and all on own. So here you don't have to put in text or anything, you just um, fill it in and then whoever that is going to fill it will just slide in and, and pass in his uh, information. So when I publish the feedback, it goes to all feedbacks here, right? So this is capstone project into 23 feedbacks. So here I, so this is how it is the, um, the other side of it when you want to fill the form. So this is it here. So I can't submit without my email. So normal um, Google Forms, yeah. You can actually submit, but you have to have your email. And how do the people actually feel that they have submitted? Because here we don't tell them this is your mint address or this is your wallet address. Mm -hmm. yeah. Instead, here we actually just tell them putting your email address. And that was 23 capstone. Maybe they will be like 20. Um, mm -hmm. you said, do you love 
um, WBA maybe zero or ten, and um, they submit their feedback. So why is only your feedback? Let's go on chain and confirm. I don't know if you guys can see my screen. No, we can't right now. Oh, I'm very sorry about that. It's so, okay. No, I have to share it. I'm sorry about that. You're okay, Alex. Uh, let me share it. I think this is it here. So can you guys see it now? Hello? Yes. Okay, yeah, so, this is, so this is the client side of it, the other side where you share it and people get to fill it. So if you don't provide their email, it won't um, actually submit. But once the users provide their email um, mm -hmm. and answer the questions by sliding sliding um, around it and now submit it and then it just show them form submitted successfully, check your email for confirmation. So basically, uh, while we have the data on chain, we have um, a confirmation on their mail that they actually submitted. So let's go on chain and see whether what um, was submitted is there. So um, let's see. Um, it's, a, it's a very cool project. Uh, thank you. You're welcome. Really nicely done, Alex. And and you know, I I need to. I need to shout out Alex for his resilience, this cohort as well. You know, um, oops. So this is X-ray Explorer. So it's on DevNet. So we're going to um, see what we actually feel in. Um, so basically, um, this is it. So how was 2023 capstone? The point was 20. Do you love the BBA? This the point was 10. So you can basically with this data process whatever you want to do with the form and everything that is in it. So the future plans for the application, uh, I am planning to put in gated reviews where um something like Drip House can say, okay, people that have um so 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 um artists artworks should um feel a review of how they feel about the artwork and all that. And also, before you fill the form, I'm also planning to make it of get code where for you to fill the form, you pay a little bit of um, key so that it will avoid botting and all that. So that is my capstone project. I don't know if you guys have any um, thing about it. It's cool. It's very cool. I know you worked really hard. What I was going to say is that, you know, you, um, Alex, you know, we, we gave Alex the, the option to bump to a next cohort because he got sick in the middle of the cohort and really was unable to do much. And he said, no, I want to do it. And he he did something that doesn't usually happen, which is he got caught up with, with a lot of really hard work and resilience. So congratulations, Alex, on that. Really nice project. Excited to see where we, where we take this next. Any thoughts or comments, anyone? I think this is great, and I think you know, just for an MVP, it really shows the possibility. Um, reviews are just ridiculous in, in a lot of ways. Um, they mine you for data um, that they never pay you for. So um, having a model like this on chain can have a lot of a lot of functionality for sure. Yep. Look, reviews are reputation, and reputation is credibility. I mean, these are important components. Well done, Alex. Proud of you, my friend. Um, let's shift gears to something a little bit different, but very cool. Maddie, you're up. All righty. Thank you, Jeff. Um, so hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Matias, uh, and uh, I've been working on this project. Just I cannot say I did it solo without Andre's help. So I just want to say thank you for him. Uh, what I did is uh, uh, the project is called Novi, and it's uh, a way for community. It's, it's a protocol on communities and memes. So you can consider it like as the SNP uh, index protocol. Uh, and we started with memes as a niche, but the plan is to go beyond. Uh, 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 just memes, but rather into the Solana ecosystem. 
Um, so one of the problem is uh, discovering rising communities on time on Solana is a hit and a miss. Uh, you know, we have seen that with Bonk, we have seen that with Weave uh, uh, and other tokens. And the other part is also allocating and managing funders to such small niche or memes. A community is painful and a losing process. Most of us, you know, buy on the top and probably sell on the bottom, uh, which is very common for a lot of us. Um, the solution is Novi, which is the SNP of Solana. Uh, so, what uh, we it's going to be like a curated uh, platform where new people into the Solana or even Digins uh, can easily find uh, new rising communities. And not only that, we will automatically allocate and rebalance uh, the funds. So what this means is, let's say right now we have a location for meme us like Weave or uh, Bonk, but in the future new tokens come in, what we do is in behind the scenes, we manage that uh, uh, funders. So we can allocate maybe a little bit more to, uh, um, to the newer tokens. Um, so metrics wise, uh, uh, if you guys are familiar with Bank, uh, Bank about uh, uh, did about like 650 million in volume. So it can show that like, okay, there is, you know, a big market for it. And then Weave has reached up to like half a billion market cap at its peak. Um, and if we consider uh, um, communities like NFT communities like Mad Labs, uh, they probably do about like $17 billion per month just on TensorFlow. We're talking about volume here. Um, and with our Novi, what our wallet would look like is we'll have Bonk, we might have been buying some, you know, fake uh, meme coins, we think they were real, and it just looks like a mess, and usually it's all going down. Um, but with Novi, what happens is we just only pick like, you know, a few quality tokens, and uh, uh, hopefully uh, with, you know, good management of the funders, we should be uh, uh, making profit. Um, so, uh, for, uh, I'll show like the demo, uh, clickable prototype as well as the work, uh, the code, but in the future, uh, we want to include, uh, more complex mo uh, modules to allocate funders, uh, risk management, um, and also more tokens to be added after we curate or, you know, do a uh, good research and also better UI and UX, uh, uh, to find new communities and also collaborate with DAOs as well as maybe like Saga Mobile where, uh, uh, you know, people who buy those phones can get maybe airdrops or tokens like that. Um, so why me? Uh, I have about like, you know, 10, 10 years experience in the startup and building like, you know, backend systems. I've worked for uh, uh, like, you know, fintech companies like integrating FedNow recently with Wells Fargo. And also I've worked for Reserve Protocol, which was like a stablecoin company. Um, and also like I personally trade for myself. I've uh, been doing this for three plus years and also I've been early adopter of Solana since 2021. Uh, and also had a startup building fiat in crypto custody. Um, cool. So now first let's go to the prototype and what it looks like is, uh, okay, you wanna sign in with Solana. So you sign in and then you choose your wallet. So let's click Phantom in this case. Um, and then we connect. So once you connect, what happens is you deposit your soul behind the scenes, we're gonna manage everything. But the only thing you do is literally like supply a uh, soul. And then in this case, uh, I have selected some soul. And then we also receive NFT as a proof of you know your deposits uh, because the token is going to be managed in our vault uh, and and not only that uh, instead of issuing LP tokens we decided to go with NFT for now that way uh, even new users who don't know about DeFi can become a uh, part of what we're building. Um, and what your portfolio will look like uh, uh, behind the scenes is, let's say you might have some parts of Win, Oppose, Peep, Punk, uh, and so on. So you would be, you know, uh, 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 able to see this. But we are the one, like, you know, managing this fund. Uh, yeah, and you know, when you're done, what you can do is you can come and, you know, withdraw your soul. So uh, whatever uh, profit is available or uh, at the time, uh, you'll be able to uh, get that in withdrawal. 
Um, yeah, so this is the UI part. And uh, when it comes to the coding, uh, it's Interactus. So the way it works is, is uh, it's Interactus with Jupyter API on mainnet to make transactions. Uh, so you, we give it a soul and we give back right now just weef and bonk. So I have already, you know, I'm just gonna run uh, um, the test case. So let's see. Uh, so the reason we did it on mainnet was like uh jupiter they don't have anything on devnet so there was a lot of work that needs to be involved with so just went straight to mainnet so right now we're getting fetching a code on jupiter um it takes a little bit of time maybe still people are um claiming their jupiter token that could be the case but uh should be done in a few seconds. Oops, this is a timeout error, but a transaction is most probably executed. So in the meantime, go back to Oops. Yeah, we typed this up great to try to fetch stuff from Jupiter this week. <laughs> yeah, that's been a pretty painful. Uh, oh, okay, good. At least it's working for now. So in the meantime, yeah, we can see this transaction. So this is the on mainnet. You see that's successful. Um, and the data we're seeing here, this is the first transaction. So we were able to supply Sol and we get back bonk. Um, and the next one should be, yes, exactly. And this is gonna be for weave. So yeah, same thing, uh, we supply Solana and we get back weave token, you can see here. And then uh, I think yeah, the last part is issue, um, um, issuing a, an NFT and we're using an inscription for now. So uh, definitely a lot expensive. Uh, this probably the whole thing would take like maybe a dollar or two, but uh, in the future we plan to make it much more uh, easier and affordable. So uh, the reason we're doing the inscription is because we wanna um, put the like the amount of the tokens uh, into the NFT in a state of an LP token. The reason, I, as I mentioned, is uh, just to make it very simple as from the user point of view. But, um, um, you know, I discussed this with Leo about it where uh, NFTs could be harder to compose with. So uh, I think we will reiterate on that idea. Yeah, so this is probably the inscription data minutes. Um, yeah so you can see that like you know uh this is the data so probably this is like the amount of bonk and the amount of uh width uh it's written um yeah i think we should be done and yeah i think the next process is also withdrawing uh let's see if we can do it in another minute or so Yeah, so, yep, successfully inscribed. Um, yep, this guy. Yeah, so the, what is subscribed, like the data that is, is written in the inscription is basically this guy, like, okay, you have this much bonk, you have this much width. Um, yeah, so right now we're doing withdraw, so, at this point, uh, we're doing the user is uh, calling a withdrawal function, and we're converting the bonk and weave to Solana, and and this will withdraw it back to the user account. Um, okay. 
Okay. Sure, we got some air here. Um yeah. Okay. So yeah, I think there is some probably timeout error. Uh but uh yeah, basically this is what the project is and uh yeah, thanks for listening. Well done. Again, another mm -hmm example of the resilience necessary to to finish and do well um you know this would be a perfect ideal time to shout out andre and leo and richard and and dean you see all the heads and smiles of the face mm -hmm. that you can see um you know those guys put in you know and and nate as much as anybody as well those guys put in tremendous amount of time uh, in those private discords. When, when we tell people it is not just watching the videos of the sessions that make us who we are, it is really what happens in those private discord chats and the one-on-ones and all those additional pieces and the relationships that we build with, with all the builders that, that make us different. Um, it is, you know, Maddie's, you know, friendship with Andre and Leo is has has been great. Uh, Nate has given him tremendous guidance from the DeFi standpoint, um, and and all of them. I mean, you know, I get to be a happy, you know, fly on the wall watching all these conversations happening, and I see the magic happening in those private discords, and that's why we have the vibe in this room that we have, which is, you know, we're all celebrating each other. And you know we definitely need to celebrate those teachers and 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 mentors that help everyone get to this point. Um, well done, Maddie. Really excited. You know we've got big plans for this, so we'll uh, we'll keep rolling. And next yeah, up is Mike. You. With another, if you're welcome. Next up is Mike. We've got a with with a very cool project. Thank you very much. And I will hit play. Play slideshow. Oh, there we go. Can you all see my screen? Yeah, looking good. Excellent. Thank you very much. Uh, so Reveal is my project, and it is an interesting solution to a fairly boring problem. Uh, you'll see on my next screen, on my next slide, which is a, a fairly, fairly boring slide. Uh, so this is US law, um, uh, an update that happened uh, a couple of years ago uh, that says that amended um, IRS reporting uh, to require uh, basically to add digital assets. So if you receive more than 10,000 US dollars in digital assets, then you have to fill in this beautiful form on the right uh, and send that to the IRS. And it's, it's probably, you know, the usual kind of making sure that you know, there's no money laundering or other bad things. Uh, and it actually took um, effect on uh, after December 1st, 2023. Um, so, uh, oddly enough, around that same time, um, I uh, needed to find a good capstone to work on, so I, I picked this, and I'm excited to show you what I've built. Um, interestingly enough, um, shortly after 1st of January 2024, when the new laws took effect, um, the IRS kind of changed their mind. <laughs> uh, a few weeks into the new year, um, they announced they were delaying Form 8300 reporting for crypto, but eventually it will be in. So when that happens, uh, we will be ready. So Reveal is actually a really simple on-chain app. All it does is store, store Form 8300 data. Um, and it uses the composability of Solana to um, simply piggyback off your existing SPL transfers. Um, so if anyone's ever used the note or memo programs, which allow you to attach a little note, like a thanks for the beers or whatever else to uh, a token transfer. So you have a, uh, a transaction with a token transfer instruction and a note instruction. This is really similar. So you just have uh, a compute budget instruction just because we're gonna write a lot of data. Um, a token program transfer instruction and a reveal program reveal instruction. 
Um, we encrypt the data uh, on the client side using the uh, public key of the recipient. Um, that way, the receiver has the data they need for the IRS, and the sender has kept the data private because only the receiver can actually read it. Um, so yeah, neat solution to the problem and kind of demonstrates the composability of Solana. Um, it is just the sender specific parts of 8300. A lot of the information, for example, like the amount of currency that's being transferred is obviously stored elsewhere. Uh, it's just under 1K of data. And the format is built uh, and validated entirely in the client side. Basically, I didn't want to end up rewriting all my Rust um, whenever I wanted to change the format of the data a little bit. Um, so it's just a, a big old byte array um, stored inside the PDA. Uh, tech stack. Um, it's, uh, <laughs> I thought it was funny when they asked us to do tech stack because I'm like, we're all using Rust and Anchor. Uh, but here's some useful things that I, I found were very helpful. Um, I hate looking at like numbers in code, just saying like, you know, 8 plus 32 plus 32 is not my style. Um, uh, Rust has this really nice, oh, Anchor has this really nice init space macro. Um, so for example, you can see on the right, it's, it's uh, you know, we have our revelation struct and it has uh, this init space kind of macro, which adds this trait, which allows anything that's using that struct to just work out the size needed, which I really liked. Um, Anchor has this uh, multiple template, which makes a, a folder called instructions, and you have all your separate instruction handlers in there, which is really nice, and it's more functional style. Um, just as a personal thing, I rather than having like functions on structs um, using impl uh, as a kind of OO, being that the struct itself isn't really changing, isn't really using to store state, OO didn't feel very right to me, so a more functional style worked really well. This this multiple template is is really fits the way I think. Um, uh, transactions, yeah, are just SPL and Anchor transactions. Um, so uh, Anchor has a dot instruction converter that can convert an Anchor trans uh, an Anchor instruction to a um, Actually, that word, that first word transactions there should be instructions. But transactions are comprised of both SPL and Anchor instructions. But yeah, Anchor has a dot instruction which converts it just used for normal Web 3.js, which means they can, on client side, we can just, you know, um, compute program, compute budget, token program, transfer, and then finally reveal program reveal um, just using Web 3.js connections, um, Web 3.js to actually send the uh, transaction to the validator. Um, I really like Web3.js um, and I didn't want to kind of, um, I didn't want to use more of the Anchor client side work than I needed to. Um, finally, Web3.js, um, it uses NACL um, to do encryption, but the next version of Web3.js won't use NACL. It will just use native web crypto. Um, so using uh, there's some tools to convert old Web3.js key pairs into web crypto key pairs, which means you don't need any extra software to do the client side encryption. I'm still actually working on the client side encryption, I should point out full disclosure, um, but all the on-chain stuff is actually implemented, which is good. Um, tests, tests, sorry, I'm kind of just a little bit detailed. Um, oh, I'll keep it moving. Uh, tests is using node tests and node assert rather than Mocha Chai. Um, and the test is simply put data in and make sure they can get it back out um, based on uh, an identifier that's part of the transaction log. Uh, there's a great little debug macro for looking structs, and a lot of the times I would uh, use Solana Explorer to point it at local host. Um, I could actually just run the tests and tell Anchor not to start its own validator, and then look at, use Solana Explorer to actually look at the chain afterwards. Um, the uh, the data on the right pretty looks kind of uninteresting, but if you look at the last part of it, there's there's all those uh, two zeros. That's um that's just that's the white space at the end of the JSON blob you've actually I've shoved into the PDA. Uh, it also took me way too long, and big shout out to Leo here to work out that I needed to provide the PDAs in the accounts list, even when I'm about to make the PDA, just so Solana can know which transactions overlap. Um, so yeah, this is a big lesson for me, basically learning about how to debug Anchor, which was uh, interesting. 
Um, thanks very much. Um, yeah, codes on GitHub. Uh, there's you know end-to-end -end tests, and uh, yeah, they, if you want to see what they look like, actually, kind of look like this. Um, it's really just making sure that what we write out to the PDA, we get back. So that's just an assert D people that checks recursively that the object we write out to the chain is exactly what we get back from the PDA, plus tests for a couple of other helpful functions that right. So yeah. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Awesome. Yeah, no, we, we talk a lot. <laughs> uh, anyone have any questions? Gloria, you have a question. Mike, are you from the States? What's that, sorry? Are you from the States? Um, the quality, are you saying, am I from the United States? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the law is only for the United States, and, and I'm I'm living in New York, so. Oh, okay, I gotcha. No, because that that's just so I think it's cool. Yeah, my accent doesn't yeah. match my location. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or your project, but either way, and maybe that you're helping address like such a boring thing on the stage. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, I think this what you what you built, Michael, is 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 certainly powerful um it demonstrates you know what other people can do with compliance documents and privacy on chain it's it's super super powerful and it shows really where the future of web3 can go there's a lot of people that say you know web3 can't be used because it doesn't facilitate itself to privacy and compliance um and this is proof that just in a short period of time you yourself have been able to show that it's possible um so really awesome yeah, the other really interesting thing um, is that this kind of becomes like a cooler version of note and memo where you can just have um, uh, structured data that may be encrypted and shove it in the blockchain and attach it to a transaction, which is which is kind of useful for things way outside like reporting requirements. Yeah, I mean, just think about um, a lot of people like in Ven Venmo is really, really popular in the US and there's like privacy sites on who can see the notes that you send when you send money. This could be another way of, of en enabling transactions with memos between people that only certain people can see, which could be really powerful as well. Yeah. Well, cool. Any other questions? All right, let's keep it rolling. Berg, you're up next. All right, let me share my screen real quick. Um, you see my screen? It's coming up, indeed. All right, I'm going to start up uh, the things in the meantime. Um, uh, I don't really have a... Uh, let's see. Do you see it? Indeed. Maybe... Bump it up just a hair for everybody. Let me see. Is it visible? I have to kind of click a little bit around to see it's you guys. Most, yeah, it looks good. Yeah. All right, so the project idea actually uh, tackles two things uh, that we are having in in a Solana ecosystem. One side is, um, I guess everybody noticed when you're deploying a program on chain, it, it's, it takes up a few hundreds of transactions. So the first uh, part of the project tackles the size of the programs and um, actually to compress that uh, size and reduce the amount of transactions you have to complete to get there uh, to deploy uh, your program. I think I'm just gonna run a command. So luckily I was able to find, or yeah, we were able to find a, a good way to compress some size of the program data, which means you can also save a bunch of uh, transactions when you are trying to deploy. So for example, this program originally would take for uh, 317 ten transactions to deploy it on chain, but with the compression, we can uh, save 10%, approximately 10% of data from all the data that you have to 
deploy on chain. So making so moving a little bit of uh, moving a little bit of uh, computation units or let's say uh, account data size to computation units, replacing uh, a bigger data size with. Oh no! Okay, yeah, that's failed. With computation units. Let me see. Yeah, I'm sorry for us. It's still under development, of course. So, as you can see, it probably would have taken uh, 317 uh, transactions to deploy this program, but we can split it up to uh, 15 plus 217. So we can save up a, a bunch of transactions just by removing uh, some parts on your local machine and then uh, adding those parts back on the chain and then deploying your program with those uh, stuff added back. So that's it. It's a little bit messy. I understand. <laughs> I think Let me see if I can. Yeah, so data compression is, is really hard to visualize, but I can I can maybe visualize some sizes. Um, so the other part that the project uh, tackles is um, when, the, uh, of course, the solar price is going up, and when you have to deploy a program, you have to uh, to give out six or seven uh, Solana to deploy your program. So with the contract, what I built, uh, not just showcasing the compression possibility, but also creating a platform where uh, a founder or maybe a crowdfunding uh, group can support a developer and uh, create a possibility for them to or for him to deploy a program with the support of the of the other group so this is for example the account size transaction uh, happened on uh, on my local validator the first key is the developer he had to sign the transactions that's of course that uh, five lamp ports or or whatever that then the standard transaction fee is and the account size transaction resizes the PDA accounts that are storing the data with the help of the founding PDA. So that means the developer, if he agrees with the founder, he can he can manage to deploy program just by paying for the transaction costs and even paying less for the transaction costs because we are saving on transactions with the compression. So there is already a, a quite some quite some good result, uh, saving 10% of the transactions. Uh, but there are, of course, for the future, more possibilities to save even more space, uh, or or maybe more size and reduce more even more transactions, and then make deployment of programs smoother, cheaper, and more achievable for everyone. Basically, amazing. That's everything, everything in uh, GitHub. If everybody or anybody has some questions, just let me know. It's a great project, Maddie. Yeah, uh, definitely exciting project. Uh, I don't know if I missed this, but what exactly is being compressed to make it a uh, very lightweight? The program bytes being compressed. So the first step, what uh, what I was able to achieve is just removing uh, eight bytes of consecutive zeros and replacing replacing them with three bytes of uh, of an index or an offset. So imagine like you have eight zeros uh, uh, in a row, and then you can just replace it with three bytes of a, of an index that uh, that says to the contract that that on that index of the bytes has to be five zeros, and I'm just representing them with uh, three bytes of an index. OK. Cool. Thank you. Pretty. Uh, sure thing. Yeah. Pretty amazing and innovative, and and just a, a a great example of, and all these projects have been how someone can come in and bring who they are and what works for them and what's meaningful to them, and build a project on it. Um, you know, I remember early on having conversations with Berg about, you know, is this really the right program for me? You know, what I like to do. And he started talking about being able to do this. We're like, that's a great project. You know, especially as during the course, Solana's 
token price went way up, which for retail and investors is a good thing. But for developers, it, it's not always the best thing because it costs more to deploy projects to mainnet. And so here, a you know, we took a problem, a real use case, a pain point, and came up with a solution in a way that really spoke to Berg and how he sees the tech and you know he sees it in a, in a different very interesting and and lower level way and has built a really cool project and and we definitely have some plans not only for this but also for bird moving forward so you know hopefully everybody has felt the same way that you have found something and an opportunity to express yourself and what's meaningful for you through this process any other thoughts before we move on to the next presentation? Nice. All right, let's go, Theo. Hello. Good morning. Good again. Good morning. Okay. Can you see it now? Yes. Can you hear me? <laughs> okay. Cool. Uh, hello, everyone. Good morning. I'm Theo. So, right now, I'm building DowCrate with two other co founders who are non developers. So, DowCrate is um, we're planning to pioneer a DAO powered renaissance. What that means is uh, basically an age where creators, artists, um, content creators, builders, founders are well supported uh, both financially and, you know, with the decisions of the community that's backing them. So it's basically a decentralized crowdfunding platform for creators and builders. So um, it actually combines traditional crowdfunding with decentralized governance um, in the blockchain. And yeah, it empowers both creators and backers um, to influence project decisions through unique DAOs and milestone-based funding. So as you can see here, um, backers or funders can um, decide whether to release the budget or release the funding for the creator for the project um have comments reactions and whatnot um and say like uh hey did you really achieve your milestone or not um and the creators can provide like uh feedback and proof and all of that and in that create we actually have as i've said we actually we actually have two types of users um so number one is the creator so you, you can create an account be a creator and you can create and manage your project, um, have a creator profile dashboard, uh, monitor your funds for your projects, and you can also manage the milestones and the polls for your backers. So I just also wanted to highlight uh, funding monitoring, especially the creator profile dashboard, because at my full-time job, um, actually uh, what I'm doing is um, we're also creating like some sort of uh, like a dashboard for especially for stakeholders and we're really integrating or moving into AI and this is what I wanted to contribute to um, to all the builders here in Web3 especially in Solana as well uh, like how to really uh, help those creators to be funded uh, like what decisions can they do um, yeah uh, and our next type of user is a backer so uh, if you're a backer you, you can simply fund the project uh, and uh, participate in poll voting uh, and then why do we actually build our create um this is actually pretty personal <laughs> because yeah uh, builders need money and time to build their mvps right and this is especially true for uh, for someone like me, who's a breadwinner supporting one or even two families who currently have a full-time job 
a full-time job they can quit juggling it with uh side hustles because we can you know quit our full-time jobs and it's just not enough um and also while managing developers in three time zones with a six hour gap and yeah so this dow create project is the perfect example of why i'm building dow create i want it to be my main side hustle or if i'm even luckier become the main thing that i'm working on and building um, in the long term so yeah i and my co-founders want to help dreamers and builders to have a support system and a community that helps them build from the ground up from financials to decisions to achieving greater things together and actually um one of the main reasons as well why we're building this is uh, to make sure that supporters funders or backers are protected as well um, like what you can see here um, these are actually these are real projects i'm not sure if any one of you has funded these projects way back um, these were funded in kickstarter um, so yeah from we wanted to have like a system a platform where backers are also protected um, through our milestone funding um yeah imagine for scarf which is a like a lightsaber for your beard it's a laser razor raised four million dollars but actually nothing happened so yeah they're very well uh they're very much well funded but they didn't deliver at all and it's just a free example there's tons hundreds and thousands of projects like this who actually raised a lot of money but didn't deliver at all and yeah um actually this next slide uh uh so this is the like uh, what i'm working on right now so obviously this, this will be built on the solana network using rust and with anchor and yeah everything will be an account from the two types of users to the project house to the milestone treasury as grow and even the pulse and to store large amounts of project details and all of those data, the metadata, the poll data, the images, project updates, and all, uh, we'll be using our wins as a storage facility by Iris. And we'll also be utilizing compressed NFTs. Right now, I'm looking into uh, Bubblegum from Metaplex. And uh, that will be used to token gate the pages at the web app that i'm building using nexus um in the front end and of course will be powered by helios rpc um to interact with the solana blockchain but i'm also actually considering iron forge uh but yeah I'm, I'm still looking into it once i started working on the front end and in terms of progress i'm still on these three sections uh, to be honest, so like creating the Solana, uh, in creating the Solana program, basically the minting of the CNFT, uh, and finally moving on to the actual voting. How we can involve. Sorry, can you hear me, baby? Uh, yeah, special is Leo here. Yeah, special thanks to Leo for answering a lot of my questions about the CNFT. Uh, yeah, I hope I can continue doing so. <laughs> and lastly. Uh, yeah, do keep an eye out for the waitlist. We'll be rolling out this month. Uh, I'm just finishing up on the landing page that we're doing. And yeah, here's a little sneak peek on uh, on the platform. So um, as you can see here, this is the funding part where the milestone, um, uh, there's an ongoing uh, poll, like if the milestone is achieved or not by the creator. Um, and here we have the polls now for the project updates, like on what direction should the project go? Um, uh, yeah, backers can also fund this project. And this is how backers can actually fund the project. Uh, like they will, basically the creator will have to set like the uh, tiers of funding. Uh, so for example, uh, yeah, for in in exchange of twenty is this so or dollars? Yeah, in exchange of one soul, for example, you will get this reward. So basically, nothing is uh is 
funding about investment. I mean, your your funding is not an investment. Um, it's just an ex these are just in exchange of uh of your support as a backer. So uh yeah. And yeah, that's that great. Uh pioneering a DAO powered renaissance. Very nice. Yeah, really yeah. awesome. Yeah, I, I was just Jeff and I were just <laughs> chatting. Um you know, as we we've been working with you on this for a while, um, but it just seems that this model could lend itself to more than just Kickstarter, right? Um, do you possibly see this as a base layer that's that's sort of modular? Because this could apply to like gig work. This could apply to um, a sort of investment model um, as well. There's there's a lot of different a lot of different types of investment models that could be put on top of this um grant distributions um you name it thoughts on on the functionality of that once you get this off the ground it was the last question are you just are you thinking to expand this capability so that other people can plug into it and use it for other other funding functionality such as grant distribution or gig work contracts right this this all has a similar infrastructure for a lot of different types of distribution of funds yeah uh those other types of funding that you mentioned we actually haven't taken a look at yet basically uh as long as there will be no um investments involved we're pretty much going forward with it but if you know uh what we don't want is for it to become an investment vehicle because there will be a lot of legal works that needs to be done, right? Uh, but yeah, I, we're open to suggestions. We're open to uh, uh, one of the things that you mentioned. Very cool. Any more questions? All right, let's move on to Whistle. Thanks, Leo. Everyone. Hello, everyone. Hey. Wait a second. Can you hear me? OK. You can. So you can see the presentation? Indeed. So uh, first of all, I want to say thank you for the opportunity, because uh, okay. Yeah, it's not uh, easy to find someone that is willing to help other people to, to build. So uh, thank you. And again, I'm Tata Martins and with Lolo, we are building Whistle. So Whistle, what is it? Whistle is an on-chain uh, on refiler system that allows DAOs and platform to provide to their users a referral code to share. So when new users make a purchase, uh, with the ref code, of course, referrers earn a percentage of the amount spent. It's a normal um, referral code. But we decided to do it on chain, and we decided also to merge the referral code with the NFT. So users need to mint an NFT on our platform to get the referral code, and need after a while, of course, uh, to perform a claim to collect their reward. So we decided to build this uh, project because uh, ex existing referral programs are inefficient, uh, difficult to track and expensive. Um, On-chain protocols are cooler and allow for transparency. And in this way also referrals will always be rewarded for the action performance when uh, someone used the referral code. So uh, there is security. And NFT uh, are cool. I mean, uh, you can trade them. You can decide to, they have different utilities. So the, the program that we built has a different step. The, the first one is uh, the init referral. So once the referrer minted the NFT, he performs a transaction to create an NFT escrow account where all the referral rewards are stored. So all the rewards will be sent there. And the referral PDA, where the referral details are stored, like uh, 
referral code or uh, the percentage for uh, that specific referral code. And we use uh, the NFT Mint as a seed for this account, as you can see here. Uh, I put some more details to maybe to, to let you understand how this works. You can see also the percentage that is uh, already put on the structure. And the second step, so um, uh, it's uh, when uh, the buyer apply the ref code and makes the purchase. So the buyer is now forever linked with the ref code. Right now we decide to, to make it forever. Let's see what will happen. And the tokens are distributed between seller, referrer, and whistle. So uh, we, we decide to, in this transaction, to don't put fees right now. Uh, I mean, but you can see that uh, there is uh, the application of the ref, uh, wait a second. There is the application of the ref code and the purchase of 1,000, you know, 100 tokens. Yes, that are split between uh, 20 to the NFT SQ and 80 to the protocol treasury. As I said before, no fees for whistle right now. Um, yeah. So there are all the ATA because uh, we are talking about a token. Uh, yeah. The last step that we decide to to create it's the withdraw. So uh, in this step, this step allows the NFT holder to call the withdraw function, of course, uh, from the next to uh, sorry the from the NFT SQ and claim the the rewards the tokens. You can see here that there is a transfer of uh, 20 tokens that before were, you can see here. So uh, we plan to move forward with this project and we plan different steps like uh, to implement constraints and more future, uh, create also a, a user interface, maybe for public testing. So let's see if people can uh, try this uh, protocol and see what happened. And yeah, the, the future goal also is to create a marketplace and tokenize this kind of referral, but step by step. Okay, this is the protocol, it's Whistle. So uh, if you have any question or feedback, let us know. Mm, there are some improvements that we still didn't uh, update, but uh, yeah, it's in the roadmap, let's say. Nice job, guys. Well done. Uh, worked really hard throughout. And um, let's let's keep going, though, because we've got uh, we're going to come up on time here. So next up, we have uh, Nikhil and Nur with the developer marketplace. You guys ready to go? Yeah, I'm ready. Uh... I guess no reason here, so I'll be doing this alone. All right, one second. Let me share my screen. Okay, seems like my screen is up. You guys can see it. Okay. Indeed. All right, so. Uh, hi everyone, this is Nikhil Kumar. Uh, me and Noor have been working on this uh, Dev Tech Marketplace project for the past few weeks. Uh, first and foremost, I'd like to thank everyone who was involved in this code, mostly the mentors. I mean, without them, it this wouldn't have been possible. Thank you again. All right, so what we are working on is this marketplace. Uh, which we are building on top of Solana blockchain. So the problem statement here is issues faced by the freelancers uh, in the traditional marketplaces. Mostly, uh, there are two or three points that we are tackling. 
and that are the high fees high fees uh, we are trying to reduce the costs for both freelancers and clients there are payment delays in the traditional marketplaces which we uh, are tackling via the solana blockchain we also are ensuring the transparency okay uh, the technologies that we are using here is obviously the Solana blockchain. Uh, we are using Anchor and Rust to build the uh, program, the smart contract, and we are using Next.js for the front end work. Okay, so the features, which as I said, we are mostly working on low fees, fast transactions, and secure platform. Okay, benefits for freelancers. I mean, uh, most of the freelance uh, platforms deliver these particular uh, benefits access to global opportunities the most important thing we are focusing here is secure and fast payments and we are also going to integrate a verified reputation system but we haven't built it yet we are working on it okay next up benefits for clients uh, clients can access top talent secure and fast payments and transparent workflow. The roadmap currently, we have a smart contract up and ready. That's just a basic one. Uh, client is under testing and we, are, we have a lot of features that we want to integrate. I have only mentioned one here. Uh, we are trying to integrate GiveWork, which is a project from a previous cohort uh, from WBA. Uh, okay, so I have a small demo here. I'm just gonna demo creating a profile. I'm very sorry about the awful website. Uh, we are hiring for UI and UX designers if anybody wants to apply. <laughs> okay, so this is the platform. Now, if somebody wants to hire the, uh, or get hired, they can simply create a profile. For example, I'm gonna create a profile here. Now, I have commented out a few of the things like profile pictures, skills, uh, projects, works, just for the demo purpose. Uh, I own a computer and I write code. Okay. And now I'm going to. Okay. So it says, oops, wallet not connected. I'm going to connect my wallet here. Okay. Since I'm connected, I'm going to create a profile and sign the transaction. Domain confirm. User created. So uh, now I have been directed to jobs and I can apply to jobs. This is the smart contract here. Uh, we already have the escrow, the job service, and the user profile accounts. Uh, again, I'd like to thank Richard, Leo, and Andre. They were literally the ones who helped out here with escrow and made this possible. Okay, so we created a, uh, an account right now. Let's see if this is feasible or not. Okay, a few seconds ago. So if we click here, we can see that uh, a user profile was created over here with a name, Nikhil Kumar, an email, a image URL, and skills. These, uh, we didn't type it. This was uh, static. I mean, I directly sent it through the form data. But you saw we gave in the name and email, and it's up here on the blockchain. Uh, so that's about it. Actually, um, with this capstone project uh, we are not trying to uh, address anything monumental any monumental challenge uh, we are just focusing on simplifying and making freelance work easier i believe that even a small change can uh, make a big difference for freelancers and clients so yeah thank you very good yeah we we totally agree which is why this type of project does fit in our um in our capstone, each cohort, um, the more opportunities we can provide for developers to monetize their efforts, the better. And the more organized we can make it for vendors seeking talent, uh, the better. 
Um, we, we need to change that number that Grayson mentioned earlier as far as the number of people in this space. And part of that is incentivizing people to come and build in Web3. So let's shift gears. Nice work, folks. Uh, we're going to go uh, next to the NFT staking. Guys, you ready? Go ahead. Hi. Uh, let me set my screen. Sure. So uh, this is our custom project. Uh, it's in FT5. Uh, we are team up, uh, me and uh, Tang. So uh, the problem uh, we have is uh, when we own FT, uh, we don't want to um, sell it. Uh, we want to keep it, and uh, when the price go up, we you have the profit. So. Uh, we make a solution for people who want to uh, make a liquid uh, donation when they still owe the FT. Uh, the FT file. Um, we have a diagram here. Um, the people who owe FT can uh, create a landing offer to uh, the landing offer pool uh, using FTX collateral. Uh, with the amount and interest, um, then the uh, borrower can uh, request to borrow it. Uh, so we use uh, the LUSIC to make private transaction between them. And uh, we also we use uh, Helios to check the asset whether they host by uh, the um, holder. So uh, we start up with the uh, elusive here. Um, so we will talk um, for the for people to top up the money, and uh, we also build the same private transaction uh, with the uh, elusive, which is uh, zero knowledge. Uh, we also use Helios to uh, send mail to lender and borrower. Uh, also, Helios to um, notify the successful um, transaction. Uh, we also use Helios to check the sets uh, which are owned by the borrower. Um, we, we use uh, the RPC URL of Helios. Uh, the next is our demo. Good stuff. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, this is a, a big challenge of, of being able to do this in a way that works for people and um, allows them to gain the benefits of ownership and holding um, these projects, these NFTs in a way that is safe and secure, yet flexible for them to be able to do things moving forward. Yeah. Okay, so let's see our move for more understanding. Um, so in here, we see uh, the FT, which uh, are sent by the borrower. Um, we can see here the FT uh, met left. And uh, so we are checking the FT, uh, whether the borrower uh, are owning the FT. And uh, we also choose the claiming account. Uh, then we submit the request. So uh, we will switch to another account uh, which has the money to for, for people to lend it. It is your lender account. So uh, there, there is a request for people to borrow money uh, in here. So 
um, they can choose whether to accept the request from the borrower. Uh, when we accept the request, uh, they will be sending money to borrow by the administrative uh, private transaction. Then uh, the process, the public transaction process is still processing. I will skip a little bit. Uh, so, so when the ceremony is successful, uh, there will be a notification for um, them to notify us the transaction has been success. Uh, also, the, the mail for the other people. Then the borrow money has been successfully. And uh, then we can view the transition. Uh, then we can see the request here, uh, which one, one was requested. And the amount of money for the request. Uh, that's what our process. Thank you for listening. Nice job. Good, good work, you guys. Um, you know, really brought a hard project to um, to this point. Well done um let's uh let's continue to roll because we are going to run up against the hour uh shashank you got a, a game for us we built a few games this time around and it's exciting that you know we're going to be able to uh continue to contribute to this part of the ecosystem shashank thank you jeff for giving the opportunity to present uh, i would like to share the screen Yeah, the screen sharing is not working. Uh, do you want us to circle back to you and go to Tidvin first? Oh, one minute. Okay. Uh, just let me refresh. Almost made it. Yeah. All right, looks like we are having some technical difficulties. Oh, we got it. Yeah, good. Is the oh, good, is good. Yes, sir. Yeah. So I, yeah, I, I was interested in building games. So for that, uh, I looked for the game engine and the Unity was the best option to look, uh, to build the game on that. 
So I tried uh, building games and I tried to integrate the Phantom Wallet with the Unity. So this is the game. Uh, uh, let, uh, let me run this. I have played this in the YouTube. We are seeing a little bit of an overlay of two windows and we're not hearing any sound. So I don't know if that's on our end or on your end. Yeah, it's on this Yeah, you have two windows of the same game. Thanks, Berg. You want to let us know kind of what we're seeing here? I think everyone's a little confused. Yeah, so that was the game that I built and so yeah, yeah. So this was the game in Unity. So yeah, it was working. Uh, it's okay. Thank you. Thank you. And and look, maybe what we want to do is we want to maybe record a video of it of the game playing, and we can pop it in the Discord and put it in the video uh, at a later date. Nice work. I know you worked very hard on this, and you've been putting a lot of content out there. Um, let's uh, let's bring it home. Tidvin did something very interesting with um, with hardware. So Tidvin, you ready to go? Uh, hello. 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 Can you hear me? We can hear you. Oh, um, my English is not good, but uh, I uh, 
we will raise in my project. Let me see. Okay. Um, Yeah. You can see? Yep. We got okay. it. Okay. Um my project about a uh, applicate interesting blockchain into IoT device. Uh this block is uh, lock you can open those the uh, solar blockchain without having a very on an intermediary server and only the authority can open it and uh, how it works uh, i use an embed esp device program to listen for a cow chain event on rpc WebSocket and uh, on application so I, I create a small web to build a transition and generate QR code and wireless uh, can um, scan and uh, interact with the program through some page. Yeah. This is my demo, you can see. Basically, uh, this is a demo, so I put the device for everyone to see. Uh, you can see when system on the left, you will light up blue and the lock will be open. You can hear, yeah. Yes, we can. Amazing. Yeah, it's very cool. Yeah. Uh huh. Um. Thank you very for. Powerful. Oh. Yeah. Very cool. Really nice demo as well. And, you know, this was a hard engineering problem that he tackled. Um, and, you know, using some of this deep in for real world application of being able to secure on blockchain um, a real life locker. Really, really great work. Um, super proud of the resilience and, and, you know, the attention to doing something that's meaningful. Um, folks, we are at the top of the hour. Um, this was long commendation to all of you for, for resolving through the entire course and through two hours of demos, although they were super, super cool. Um, really proud of all of you. We will be in touch about next steps with everybody. Um, and, you know, of course, the next big step in everybody's mind is the hackathon. If you're going to continue to iterate on this project and deliver something to the hackathon, please keep us informed so we can support you in that process. Nate? Indeed, guys. It's just, it's awesome to end with something like that. Um, I think everyone was a little bit odd there, but it's great to go through a whole list of projects to see the amazing things that you guys have done um so many possibilities to continue to build out from what you've built so let's keep going and uh thanks guys we'll see you on the other side
Yeah, thanks, Dean and Andre and Richard and uh, Leo for tireless work helping all these get across the line. And folks, we ship. See you soon. And Richard, of course, Richard. Bye-bye, guys. Bye, y'all. Bye, guys. Thank you.